confirming and affirming guidance. The Bible in our home was always read and studied. A regular reminder from the Word of God was often used by our God-fearing grandmother to teach us the Lord was the one to consider at all times. When making plans, our grandmother taught us to say, If God wills, which was always stated to us whenever there was an anticipation coming concerning anything. John 4.15 For that ye ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. Acknowledging the Lord when things that gender discussion occur became for me a practice that gives me comfort. Considering what the Lord God says throughout the Bible about all issues of life is to me so important today. No matter the current issue domestic or foreign, I am immediately prompted from practice to consider the Bible number one for answers. Jeremiah 23.35 Thus shall you say everyone to his neighbor and everyone to his brother, What hath the Lord answered and what hath the Lord spoken? Jeremiah 23.37 Thus shalt thou say to the prophet, What hath the Lord answered thee? And what hath the Lord spoken? My mom's encouragement for us to seek God, fearing friends, was birds of a feather flock together. A helpful thought also supported in the Bible, which has over time come through loud and clear. The fact that people carry influence with them is noted. Whenever there is a public disclosure of a troubled person's background, the background of those who lived successfully are also there to influence. Whenever there is any concern or an issue which appeared to generate a worldwide or community discussion, the Bible leads. That which the Bible has said related to a subject is that which stirs and keeps my interest in the Word of God and the leading of the Holy Spirit for understanding the things that are happening in our world. Psalm 119, 63 I am a companion of all them that fear thee, of them that keep thy precepts. Proverbs 13, 20 He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Romans 15, 4 For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope, giving to the Lord. It was a great asset for us to be taught to love, serve, and give our monies to the Lord God. We were taught early to honor the Lord Jesus with our tithes and offerings by giving monies which came from that which the Lord allowed us to have. Anytime my sister and I received any monies, we knew a portion of that money we had received was to be given cheerfully to the Lord. Luke 11.42 But woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye tithe men, and rue, and all manner of herbs, and pass over judgment and the love of God. These ought you to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Malachi 
3.10 Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now. Herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I can testify from being raised mindful of the Lord God and the joy of loving and serving Jesus with tithes and offerings has been for my husband and I profitable through the years. My thoughts of my Savior now invade my every thought in every activity and situation, especially involving the blessings we have received from being faithful in giving. The Lord Jesus also encourages us also. Reach out to others with that which the Lord gives to us. I also remember being taught the monies we had left after we had given to the Lord were to be spent wisely at an early age. I tried to spend my monies on things I felt were useful and would last. I remember buying such things as a bowl, a bar of soap, a colorful washcloth, which I gave to my grandmother for safekeeping. My grandmother returned them to me years later when she visited us in Los Angeles, California.